The odds makers said it would never happen, but here we are, season two of Brad Carroll's Game Day. Another thing they predicted, Anthony Delacalci over here, coming off a seven games under 500 season, wouldn't be right here again. But you're here, Anthony. I am back, and I have only one thing to say. I'm not here to talk about the past. Are you already recycling lines? Didn't you say that in week 13 last year? I'm always new, fresh, and original. We can only hope. Anyway, we're going to have a lot of guests along the way. Anthony's going to be here all season. I'm going to be making my picks. 16 games over 500 last year, might I add. And along the way, we're going to have some laughs and hopefully some wins. This is Brad Carroll's Game Day. It's a new season. It's a new dawn here on Brad Carroll's Game Day. Anthony, what did you think of the uh, production value over there? I like the new graphics. A lot more pizzazz on the show this year. Yeah, everybody loves more pizzazz, especially us here. One team that always has pizzazz following them, number 16, Notre Dame. Media hype everywhere, but are they that good? They've been hyped for decades and haven't lived up to it. We're going to find out this year if they finally can. Well, we'll get an early season showdown with South Florida coming to town. Anthony, Notre Dame favored by 10 points in this game. Year number two of Brian Kelly, who I really like as a coach. It's going to be interesting to see how he comes out, how he has his team prepared. Dan Christ, a lot of hype, a lot of attention surrounding him. going to be interesting to see how he comes out and performs. But I'm really concerned about the Notre Dame defense. I hear that they're supposed to be better, but they haven't been a good game-changing defense in a long time. I want to see how they defend B.J. Daniels, a very athletic quarterback who can run the ball and throw the ball. It's going to be a lot of pressure on that defense. I actually like the Notre Dame defense. I think they're going to come up big this year. The, pr the pressure is on the offense as Dane Chris is going to take over as quarterback. Played a lot last year. He's going to play more this year, obviously. Brian Kelly's going to be calling plays from the sidelines. He wants to run that spread offense finally to full effect. We'll see if they actually can do it on a consistent basis. Anthony? What's your score? I think Notre Dame gets off on a good start. It's going to be a little bit of a sloppy game. I like them to win, just not to cover 24-17. to Yeah, I got Notre Dame to win and cover 28-16 over South Florida. Next up here on game day, it's Akron coming into number 18 Ohio State as huge underdogs. Do they have a chance again against Ohio State? In a word, no. Ohio State had the scandal in the offseason. They've kind of faded from view as Miami scandal has risen to the headlines. They're going to have that us-against-the-world mentality, and they're going to take it out on Akron. But I don't think we're going to learn much from Ohio State playing Akron anyway. Yeah, no Jim Tressel, no Terrell Pryor. Ohio State's going to win this game easily, but are they going to win it by enough points? What do you say, Anthony? I think they will, especially because they're at home. They'll win it 44-3. to I'm sensing, though, you're going to go in a different direction. Yeah, big spreads are always scary. 34 points is a ton. Even though Ohio State has better talent than Akron does, I'm still going with a cover by Akron, 35-16 Ohio State wins. The defending national champions are back right here on the docket, only this team isn't exactly the team of a year ago. No Cam Newton, and Auburn has a number 23 rank next to its name. They're going to be playing Utah State. What's going to happen? Auburn's the defending national championships in uniform only. Almost all the guys who helped them win that, Cam Newton, Nick Bailey, they're playing in the NFL now, so Auburn's going to struggle this year. That said, they open up with Utah State. They should be more than fine. A guy named Barrett Trotter is going to be their QB. I have no idea how good he is. I'm sure he's not as good as Cam Newton. They're going to have to rely a lot on Michael Dyer, their returning runner, running back in this game, but I think uh, Auburn can breathe easy. I think they'll be okay. Yeah, Anthony, you returned this year with the goatee intact. But you're sporting a mullet now. So you're actually becoming Auburn in, in theory here, I think. I'm not sure I follow your reasoning there. <laughs> anyway, Auburn, there's really not much to talk about here. The only thing bad about this game is the spread, 21 points. It's a little high. It's right on the button. But, Anthony, who do you got in the game? I think Auburn wins. Like I said, Michael Dyer has a big game, 37-14. to 14. Oh, We're pretty close. I got 37-13. Auburn wins. Boise State always seems to have an early season showdown on its schedule. This year is no different. The number five Broncos go in to play number 19 Georgia in the Georgia Dome. Yeah, I will rewind back to last year in order to compare it to this year. You look at what Boise State did. They went into Washington, D.C., a neutral site game that was obviously very pro Virginia Tech, and they went in and won that game. Now they're going down to the Georgia Dome, another neutral site game, playing a Georgia team that's not as good as Virginia Tech was last year. And they still have Kellen Moore. I know they got to break in some new receivers, but that is not good news for Mark Richt, who scheduled this game thinking Kellen Moore had graduated. Georgia has a great quarterback of his own and Aaron Murray, but his favorite target, A.J. Green, is now suiting up for the Cincinnati Bengals. I would be very worried if I were a Georgia Bulldog fan about this game. 
the fact that they scheduled Boise State without knowing that Kellen Moore was the quarterback is pathetic, but it's par for the course for Georgia and Mark Richt, who I don't think is going to last the season. Boise State, their big favorites, three and a half points considering they're on the road. Do they take the game? Absolutely. Boise State does what Boise State does. It wins big games, 27 to 20. You know, Anthony, I'm actually going to come up with a shocker. I'm actually going to pick Georgia to cover the spread. Boise State's going to win 24-21. It's going to be a little scary tomorrow if I don't have that game circled in the winner's column because then I'm just going to be even more angry at Georgia. Get ready to be wrong. We've got a new season with new graphics and a brand new segment. You may have noticed Brad has quite a bark here on the show, always telling you what he thinks in no uncertain terms. Well, now we're going to find out what he thinks of certain teams every week in segment we call Brad's Doghouse. If you read College Game Day Rewind over on my blog at bradcarrollgameday.blogspot.com, you know I break down each and every game each and every week. And there's a bunch of teams that draw my anger because they seemingly pick the worst possible way to lose a game and lose my pick. Well, LSU and Georgia always seem to be on that list. But this year going forward, we're going to go to the bowl season, and on my list in the doghouse is going to be Michigan. That's right, Michigan, my favorite team. They're in the doghouse because they didn't even show up to play against Mississippi State. We'll see how they do going forward, and if they can get out of that doghouse, we'll see how they do against Western Michigan. But for now, back to the picks. The Brady Hoke era is underway at Michigan, and hopefully he's going to put to bed the Rich Rodriguez disaster. Denard Robinson's back, but so is the defense. Yeah, so is the defense. Brady Hoke's first assignment is going to be able to teach his guys this is what we do on defense. We tackle the opposition when they have the ball. That didn't happen last year. We're going to find out if it happens this year. They're going to get an interesting test with Western Michigan's quarterback, Alex Carter, who threw for over 3,000 yards last year and 30 touchdowns. It's going to be interesting to see if they can slow him down. But with Denard Robinson, Michigan's defense doesn't always have to be at its best. Yeah, well, hopefully they'll be a little bit better than last year because a little bit better is a whole lot better for that team. Denard Robinson, like Anthony mentioned, is the show for this team. He's a Heisman candidate. He runs, he throws, he can do it all. Will, he be, will it be enough against Western Michigan? Obviously, yes. What's your final score? Denard Robinson, like you said, starts off the season on a bang, 44-28 to 28, Michigan. Yeah, Michigan's going to roll. The defense is going to only allow 20. Offense is going to score 38, Michigan with the easy win. One thing I never thought I'd mention on this show is TMZ, but I got to do it right now is USC running back Mark Tyler went on the program and it basically said that if you go to school, you get paid to play football. Obviously, the school didn't take too kindly to that. They suspended him for this game, 22 and a half point favorites against Minnesota. Yeah, this is a really interesting matchup to me in terms of when you look at conferences. Minnesota's from the bottom of the Big Ten. USC is one of the upper echelon teams in the new Pac-12. Even though they can't go to the postseason, they still have postseason level talent. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in this game. The two met last year in Minnesota, and the game was close in the third quarter. Minnesota actually led before USC pulled away late. I see something similar happening this year with Matt Barkley leading some key drives in the second half as Jerry Kill, the new coach at Minnesota, tries to change the culture there. Maybe Minnesota can get some positives out of this game. They're hoping. They're a rebuilding program. As you said, they're very much struggling. They're at the bottom of the Big Ten. USC needs a big season after struggling a year ago. I think they're going to do it in a big way against Minnesota. 22 and a half points is huge. But when Lane Kiffin running up the score, that's always possible to hit. What's your final score? I don't think they're going to be able to run on the score. I think they're going to have to get away from Minnesota late. 30 to 22, Trojans survive. Well, you got a close game. I don't have it as a close game. 42 to 10, Southern Cal. Week one ends in a big way Saturday night when number three Oregon takes on number four LSU in the equally big Cowboy Stadium. The Ducks are favored by three points and they got the offense to cover that spread. I am really excited about this game. I think it's going to be a great game, but before we get into it, I have to say I'm thrilled that we're going to make it through the first show of the new season without a visit from you know. Anthony, did you have to say something? Well, wait a minute, what happened? We talked about this. I thought he wasn't going to be on the show this year. Who invited him back? He found a loophole in his contract. He's going to be here for at least seven more years. He's making more than both of us combined. And I guess he has a statement for you, as always. Well, well, well. Game day is back. I was all set to ride off into retirement until Brad begged me to come back, telling me the show is nothing without me. And you know what? He's right. So the Star Attraction is back for another year to guide all you viewers through a great year of college football picks. I'll save my two digs on these incompetent co-hosts for later in the season, because I realize all my fans look forward to that. On to my picks. Boise State minus 3.5. South Florida plus 10. USC minus 22.5. Michigan minus 13.5. 
Auburn minus 21, and Akron plus 34. And my game of the week, Oregon battles LSU in Cowboys Stadium on Saturday night. Oregon, which returns quarterback Darren Thomas and Heisman hopeful Michael James, should have no problem moving the ball. LSU, who will be without starting quarterback Jordan Jefferson, just doesn't have the firepower to keep up with Oregon. Ducks rolled a 31-17 victory, setting them up for another run at the national title. Can't see anything wrong with his logic there, though. Yeah, maybe, but I still don't listen to anything he says. I mean, what's up with the insults on us? We we are the life of this show. Were you here last year? You didn't know he insults us every every week? You know how much it pains me to agree with the evil run, but his logic was right on this game. Oregon's got all their offensive weapons back. They're going to be scoring a lot of points. Meanwhile, LSU, a lot of controversy. They may have that high ranking, but... I don't know if that ranking stems from when they have a full roster or the roster they have now. Yeah, Jared Lee's experience, but there's a reason he was supposed to be the backup. He's not as good as Jordan Jefferson. Plus, LSU's suffering from some offensive line problems. That's going to be a problem as well. I don't even think the crazy Matt Hatter is going to be able to pull this one off with all the crazy tricks he normally has up his sleeve. Well, you know what I think about the so-called Matt Hatter. I don't even think he belongs on a football field because he can't coach. It's that simple. Oregon, on the other hand, wow, what can you say about that offense? Darren Thomas, LaMichael James could be the Heisman Trophy winner. They're going to run the ball up and down the field. They're going to pass it up and down the field. But do they cover the spread? I think they will. It's going to be a close game. You're going to want to tune in. You're not going to be disappointed by this game. Oregon's going to score a late touchdown to salt the game away 30-20. to Wow, I see it pretty close too. But Oregon's going to win it 31-21. A victory by Oregon could propel them to the national championship game. That's very true. All three of us have the same pick, which is a little strange because we don't normally think alike. Everything's strange. But for now, for Anthony, for the evil one, even Joe Fortunato behind the camera, I'm Brad Carroll. This is Brad Carroll's Game Day. We'll see you next week.